The Yanita Lemma is the most important result in category theory. Fundamental categorical techniques very often rely on the Yanita mechanism. I would be a rich man if I were paid every time I implicitly use it. So what is it about? The Yanita Lemma says, having a category C, an object B of C, and a pre-sheaf F on C, the set of natural transformations from the representable YB to F is in a canonical bijection with the set F of B. What does all of this mean? Imagine having a category. You can picture it as a graph, keeping in mind things like identity morphisms and composition laws. Having a category C, giving a pre-sheaf on it means hanging a set over each object of C and specifying how elements of those sets are pulled back along arrows of C. Let's say we have two pre-sheaves G and F on a category C. What would it mean to have a map between them? To specify such a map, we have to give a map of sets hanging over each object of C and ensure that maps provided are compatible with pulling back. Every element of G can be first pulled back along an arrow of C and then mapped to an element of F or first mapped to an element of F and only then pulled back along the arrow. The requirement is that the results be equal. Such a consistent way of mapping elements is what constitutes a pre-sheaf map. Pre-sheaf maps are called natural transformations. Among all pre-sheaves, there is one special, in some sense the simplest, a representable. The representable on A assigns to every object a set of arrows that go from it to A. Let's say, we have two maps from object 1 to object 0 and 3 from 2 to 0, and we regard the representable on 0. Then we hang a two-point set over object 1 and a three-point set above object 2. There is also a one-element set over 0, corresponding to the identity morphism which we did not depict in our graph. This one will play a special role in our discussion. How are elements of these sets pulled back along arrows? They do it by precomposing. Say, we have an element corresponding to the map G, and we want to pull it along F. Well, there is only one way to get a map from 2 to 0 from these data, which is to take the composite. And this is where we will send G. One thing to note now is that this pullback rule implies that our representable is in a sense freely generated by the identity on zero. The identity on zero can be pulled back into any element of the pre-sheaf. Is there a concise way to express this observation? Let's get some inspiration from algebra. Recall that a free group on generators GI is obtained by taking symbols GI and applying group operations to them with no relations except those coming from group laws. The result is said to be freely generated because it is free from any relations. Suppose we have a free group with one generator G. Note that the set of maps from it into any group H is nothing but H itself. The image of the generator determines the rest of the map. This is the defining property of a free group. Similarly, a map from a free module, or ring, or abelian group, is defined by images of its generators. Any element of a free module is a combination of generators, and has to be sent to the corresponding combination of images of those generators. So assume having some pre-sheaf F, and a representable. We want to map it into F and assume we already know where the generator goes. 
constructing the desired natural transformation we are looking for an image for every green element so take such an element and let's determine its image we have noticed before that this element is of the form f star of the identity so its image under the natural transformation should be f star of the image of the identity this forces our choice of where to send the element thus knowing where the identity is sent provides a recipe for the image of any other element pull the image of identity along the arrow this element represents note that algebraically this looks just like the story with free modules this is what the Unita Lemma is about.